given. Thank you. OK, policy or your lab. We will do it later. Let me show you some DIE part. Direct internet access. List creation. List I will show you actually whenever you are uh, creating any policy. So it's just a homework that uh, I will show you at, at the time of lab only. So you need to create some list like data prefix list, application list, VPN list. So this kind of list will be helpful for you. It doesn't mean that when you are creating any policy and you, you need to uh, define every. Every VPN like if you want to apply the policy on the. VPN 10 then VPN 20 right? You don't need to uh, define every VPN on under the policy. What you can do? You will create one list like for example. Um, Epic. VPNs right so under that you can define and for example. You have some policy and. Um, for, for. Tickle. Application. Nets. Whatever policy whatever the application you want to prioritize so you can define under the list 10.2.3 dot dot zero slash 24 then comma then 10.5 dot dot anything else you can define that there's a list you can create and those lists you can call under the policies okay i will show you when we will do the lab that how you can create the policy policy and how you can create the list. What are the significance of those list? How we will use them? OK. So I will show you some DIA. OK, this is the topology that we use to create this document. So to make your understanding, you can also I have not deleted this one. So because this policy is written on on this lab only. So. Here we are using one internet and one is MPLS. So it's an introduction. The solution focus on deploying SD band direct internet access within remote size to allow certain internet bound traffic or public cloud traffic from the branch to be routed directly to the internet. In instead of tunneling the internet traffic to a central site or data center for internet access. Benefit of using DIA is reduced bandwidth consumption. Latency and cost saving on WAN links by offloading internet traffic from the private WAN circuit. Improved branch office user experience by providing direct net access for employee at remote site location. Basically, when you offloading this traffic, so uh, you because when you have two connection like and one internet and one MPLS, so it does not know that which path it will follow. It's automatic load balancing, so unnecessary your bandwidth consumption goes goes high. So if you will locally break out. Uh, those application through internet link. So user will also uh, see the very good performance because it will not go to your hub and then it will go out. Then it will reverse on the same path. If your hub is um, on different countries or different uh, regions, so definitely there will be latency when it is going locally break out. So it is very good performance. Network address translation. Network address translation NAT is designed for IP address conservation. So now for the NAT, everybody knows that, right? For in the DIA, how we'll use it? For DIA, NAT translation for packet executed into the internet within the branch is enabled on the WAN as device via NAT overload. NAT overload is mapping of multiple unregistered IP address of single registered IP address by using different port. To achieve this functionality of WAN as devices, configure NAT on all WAN transport interface though that phase the internet. The NAT operation on outgoing traffic is performed in VPN 0, which is always only a transport VPN. The router's connection to the internet is in VPN 0. OK, D these are some design that as demand dual router hybrid remote design. How you can achieve this? Suppose you have one data center. So this is this branch is having two edges one and two. So one is connected through MPLS through a DC and one is connected to the internet and it's going through a firewall of, of your DC, right? So if you enable the DIA, 
your internet traffic from the employee will follow this path. It will come to the switch, switch to the edge, and it will go via locally breakout, and you will be able to access this YouTube, Google, any cloud. So in this figure, NAT is enabled on internet transport interface in both the WAN edge device. Note that here NAT is also enabled on T-log interface to allow the internet traffic that hits the WAN edge device. A device with direct MPLS transport to flow via T-log port towards the device that has the internet transport interface. The internet traffic then exists from second WAN edge, exit from the second WAN edge a device connected to internet also directly to internet without being routed to data center. So if you are using a T-lock extension, yesterday we did that, right? One device and the second device. And you know that internet is extended from this device to another device. So what you need to do when you are conf configuring the NAT on this VPN 0, on this one, on this interface, which is connected directly on this internet, the same NAT you need to configure on another device so that if any traffic will try to reach internet or will try will go via this path it will also NAT from here because it is having two tunnels right so this is another design NAT di route policy so there is a two way either you can create a policy Either you can configure manually, right? I will discuss in the component section to enable DIA. Centralized policy can be configured to filter the incoming traffic based on match action and route the traffic from service side VPN to transport side VPN. Another solution for DIA is to configure IP NAT route using device templates to route traffic from service side to the transport side. That is via NAT enable. So there's a two way. So if you want to configure centralized policy, this is the way that you go to configuration policy, add policy. So this is the list I was talking about previously. Before creating any policy, we have to make sure that there are certain parameters set for it. Here you need to define the site, VPN, data prefix list. These all will be used under policy creation. So here's the list we can create, the data prefix list, color list, Policer, prefix, site, SLA class. There's a multiple list available there. So we will define just name here, data prefix list name. And with the help of commas, you can define multiple prefixes here. And click on add. That's it. So that's how it will be created. That packet duplication, overlay traffic, data prefixes, or branch site. So that's how you can, under the site, you can define your branch name that site ID so that you will be able to easily identify there. Here you can see this list is for branch 1, 2, 3. So there is a two way. Either you can use comma. Like here you can see. You can use commas after the site ID or you can just define the range. Here I have defined the range 1 dash 3. It means 1, 2, 3. If I will define the range 1 dash 50, it is for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, like this. It will go till 50. So there's a two way that you can define single and with commas and with dash. So there's a multiple ways. Same for VPN. You can define. And the, after the defining the list, we'll just click on next. Create new. Custom. So I'm just showing you because we will not create any policy. It's a very easy way that you can define the template. Custom. First rule. You will define some sub policy here. Other policies we will create. We have, I have different different policies. Those policy I will create. So I have defined one list overlay traffic. Under the overlay traffic, what is this? Under the overlay prefixes, I have defined uh, these prefix list 10.1.100. 2.10, 3.10. And under the overlay traffic, I have defined 10.00008. All the traffic. Where it want to. Okay. Then destination data prefixes. I have defined overlay traffic. Except 
wait 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 is there any mistake dia destination only and here it is showing source okay actually this is, i think this is a snapshot mistake that is a source data traffic whatever submit we are learning from the land side so we need to select the source data prefixes so just we'll match the source data prefixes click on action accept then yeah action accept then we will select nat vpn so basically this policy is just enabling the nat on vpn 0 that's it and save that is the only option we need to select and though something we already achieved through the our uh, template i think uh, we will check when lab is up in one minute if i go to update okay there is a fiber cut i think i got to update they got a eta that by 2 pm it will restore but now they got a new idea that by 3 30 that fiber cut will be restored actually the server you are accessing that is a part of a company and there is a internet fiber cut nearby the company so their internet is down Airtel, yeah Airtel, yeah it's Airtel. so by 2 pm they got a it now it's 3 30 so we need to wait it's not a means a uh, house or like this so it's server existing company so I, I can fiber the lab now. you can reach the lab now yeah, yeah. okay maybe it's restored just i got to update that by 3 30 Airtel is sharing the eta yeah i was talking about this one so this is just a policy another way just you need to add route i will show you how you can add this route uh, this is the configuration yeah so for any uh, dia net route you need to add nat on that interface right and that's it and one more configuration you need to do you need to point out the default route from the service vpn suppose i am enabling the direct internet access only for guest user i want that my corporate user should reach to the hub and there you will firewall the traffic will filter there i don't want to take any risk but for any guest user which is connecting on the branch they are visiting at site and we are providing by any source that we are providing their connectivity to our company they are the part of guest user guest vlan so those traffic will be go out directly so this ip route i need to put to our default vpn zero the packet will go to vpn zero if it's not getting any route for under this VPN, so default out towards VPN 0. And as it will be hit to the VPN 0, it will find okay, there is some NAT, so it will be go out. Okay, DNS you can configure here under the VPN 0, and NAT you can enable on that interface which is facing towards the internet. So that's how you can achieve this direct internet. Right? So that kind of design you can do. Okay, let me check lab so those document i will share with you no problem this document i will share with you later on check my what is the ip of my vmanage
OK. So if I will go to this VH1 and I will see the configuration. So here I can see. Show run configuration. So NAT is already enabled on this interface. DNS is already there. And if I want to enable this internet for VPN 10, because I have connected one window on there. So let me try if internet is working or there not. So you can see it is not working. If I will try from ping VPN 10, 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. So it is not working. So let me configure. Like and subscribe my channel and share with those guys who want to learn SD-WAN. Thank you so much.